Uh, yes, I am about to recommend to all of you a distribution that removes the sudo command. So let me repeat that. Vanilla OS 2 has no sudo command. That is um, quite interesting and it was announced by the project using the title Sudont, which fair enough, Sudont. So I'll get to sudo, but let me give some context. I'm talking about Vanilla OS 2.0, code named Orchid, which is not released yet. The team, however, is very active in telling us everything about the in-progress work, and I'm here to report to you that it's super interesting. So let's talk about it. Vanilla relies a lot of, um, on immutability, which as a general idea, this allows changing system files to keep your system stable and the same throughout different installations. That brings some issues such as uh, what if you need to install a system package or what if you need to update, which necessarily requires system packages to be changed. So let's start with updates. Previously, Vanilla used the package manager in an isolated and and atomic environment, basically creating an overlay on top of your system first, using apt to apply the update there, and then if everything went correctly, the overlay is applied to the system. This is no longer the case in Orkit. Now the package manager is never used at all actually during the update, and you instead download at each update the entire image of the updated system, making your local system an exact copy of the reference one published by Vanilla. Of course, not all of the target image is actually downloaded. You only download the difference between the previous system and the new one, but the result is the same. And this is quite useful as it makes the system 100% reproducible and faithful to the tests that Vanilla did before releasing it. This, however, raises the question, what if I need to install a certain driver or, pa or package thus changing the system image I'm using? Now, we'll get drivers, which you can install in a graphical and effortless way, but let's say you want to install a system package. You can do that through the command abiroot package add htop as an example, followed by abiroot package apply. The apply command will create a local image, a bit like a fork, and this one will be kept up to date with the latest version of Vanilla OS as well. Okay, but what if you really want to change the base system? Let's say that you don't like GNOME, and I mean, who does? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. This is a joke, this is a joke. And you want to install KDE Plasma. This requires a lot of changes. So what Vanilla recommends in this scenario is to create your own image based on the vanilla one, but changing all the stuff that you need. There is a standard called the Open Container Initiative, and you just have to follow that standard. To make that easier though, Vanilla created a tool called VIP, or Vanilla Image Builder, which makes it easier to create OCI images. Th there's recipes, recipes, recipes and modules, and I won't get into the details, but Vib creates something that looks kinda like a flatback and then compiles that into an OCI image that you can use into your Vanilla install. But what if you hate Debian? Because of course, as we covered, Vanilla Orchid is actually based on Debian. So interestingly enough, the project is quite modular and provides three different OCI images to users. The first one is called Desktop. It's the one that you will download normally and contains everything I've talked about. However, the desktop image is based on the core image, which only contains the core components of Vanilla OS. And the core image is based on yet another image called Pico, which is that just a minimal version of Debian. So basically they take Debian, remove everything they don't need, <coughs> like sudo. <coughs> publish that as an OCI image and then add core components, publish that as an OCI image as well, and then add all the rest of the features and publish that as the main OCI image that users will actually install. Thing is, it's really easy to just kill Pico, take a different distributions, uh, make a OCI image out of it, and then reapply core and vanilla OS images on top of that. Thus, the system is really meant 
to make it easier uh, to swap out the distribution it's based on, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and as I've mentioned, you can also swap out the desktop image for something you've made custom with Vib, so that it has, uh, such that it has a different desktop or a specific setup that you like. So Orchid is flexible, even on the other way around. You should now be able to see why I think there's, you know, great potential here. Of course, it won't be of any interest nor potential potential if we are unable to install our applications and such on it. So Orchid has two tools that you will use to install and remove stuff without even touching the system files. One is called APX and it's meant for developers and the other is VSO which is presented as a system package manager. So let's start with VSO which by the way stands for Vanilla System Operator. It allows you to install three kind of packages, Debian packages, Nix packages, and Android packages. Android packages. Android packages. That's my dream. The latter is probably the most exciting one, and of course it uses Waydroid under the hood, meaning that you get native performances, as Waydroid is not a virtual machine or any, any, anything like that. Android apps are just as integrated in the system as everything else, and you can install or remove them through the vanilla's UI. Debian packages instead are not actually installed as system files, you know, that would break uh, immutability. Instead, VSO creates a systemd container which is deeply integrated with the system and uses, surprise, the Pico image that I've talked about earlier on. So the application or packages aren't actually installed in your system, but they're installed in this subsystem that's still based on vanilla OS Pico OCI image. And this keeps installing packages simple and intuitive, but if anything goes wrong, you still have a completely stable system, you just kick out the VSO thingy. Uh, switching to APX instead, stuff gets more exciting though. How APX works in Horkit is that it creates an environment that can be based on any Linux distribution. It does uh, this through stacks, basically. Stacks are made of a base Linux distribution and a list of packages. You can create your own stacks by changing the distribution or the packages, uh, though there are many stacks out of the box. Then you just tell APX to create a new subsystem using that stack. Then that, you can enter it and do basically whatever, even installing stuff that wasn't originally in it. But if anything goes wrong, you can always scroll uh, back to the stack. So basically you can use DNF or Zipper or any package manager of any distribution. And you can customize exactly which packages you need from each of these subsystems and they will directly integrate with the base vanilla system. Which, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you pussy. That's cool, that's cool. And of course, on top of all of this, they also decided to remove sudo. Uh, at least this is for the base system. Obviously, you can still sudo around inside the subsystems. Since vanilla aims to be as stable as can be, you will now have to use pkexec for any kind of super user action you need to take. pkexec is actually quite similar to sudo, but it involves polkit, which allows for a finer grain control of running apps like defining rules and such. So it's sudo, but with more controls in place to make sure everything is fine. This is because the idea really is that you should interact with the base system only using the commands provided by vanilla or just don't and live with the subsystems that integrate with it but are easier to kill if anything goes terribly wrong. All of this, mind you, is extremely technical stuff that happens mostly behind the scenes, but the sheer focus on making sure that vanilla OS just works always makes it super compelling option for, in my personal um, example, installing it on my special other computer because she's really not into the technical stuff and if the operating system dies, then she just rolls back to Windows, meaning that the operating system should never die. And it did just a few months ago due to a bad KD Neon update, which I had to fix at 3 a.m. That should never happen. And in vanilla OS, 
it wouldn't have happened. But of course, if I want her to use VanillaOS, it also has to be user intuitive enough for her to use it. And starting from the installation process. In fact, Vanilla is now using a completely new installer backend they wrote called Albius, which now supports Lux2 encryption as well. Albium reads a JSON file containing an installation recipe. I just cannot pronounce this word. Re recipe? Is it recipe? Recipe? I don't know. And just sets up the operating system, meaning that it's really easy to work with it as a developer. Meaning it's really easy to create a good front end for it. Vanilla OS comes with a super nice installer front end by default, but if you do want to swap uh, GNOME for something else, and I'm not gonna make any desktop suggestion of course, then Albius makes it super easy to go ahead and write a new installer front, front end that uses the toolkit that's gonna make the whole thing feel native with a desktop. What if um, any of this goes wrong? What if you run a command on the terminal whilst half asleep and somehow you just kill Vanilla OS with it? Well, even if you do that, Orchid comes with a recovery mode with a lot of options aimed at saving your ass. You can reinstall Vanilla OS whilst preserving your apps and personal data, as an example, which is already impressive in itself. But the recovery mode also gives you access to disk utilities, a rescue shell, a web Web browser to copy paste the commands from some help forum, obviously, and it repairs the file system using FS, FS, FSCK. Thank you. <laughs> All of this with a nice click of a mouse that everybody can understand. So, yeah, what can I say? I am impressed about that. About that, I did manage to get all of Vanilla OS developers or almost everybody on a live stream, which is going to be as the time of recording this Friday. And I'm not sure if this video is gonna be published before or after the live stream, depends on the editing time. But if it's published before, then this Friday, this Friday, you can come to the live stream. If it's published after, you can just go to the videos, check out the live stream, and it's one hour long probably, if everything went correctly. So you can just learn about Vanilla OS in depth and learn everything that you want to you know, discover about it because it sounds exciting. We don't have the new update yet, but I just talked about it for 15 minutes. So before I go, let me tell you about the people that actually make this whole thing where this whole thing is, you know, the videos, the kitty involvement that I have and the podcast, everything actually possible. So it's these people on my left and right. And generally speaking, I do have a goal for each month of 700 bucks to actually, you know, make a living out of it-ish, that at least make this whole thing work. And uh, so if I'm able to reach that, that would be awesome. So if you have some tips, uh, some uh, spare changes, some money, some money to give me, then that would be awesome. I do have uh, like Patreon, Ko-Fi, PayPal, Libra Pay, anything. And I do give some benefits to people donating through Patreon or Ko-Fi, such as, you know, posts, posts and uh, podcasts, these kind of things. I, I haven't done any in like a month because I was super busy, but now I'm back. I'm gonna start again. I promise, I promise. So that was it really. Thanks everybody for following and what can I say like, good luck Vanilla OS with this very uh, nice system that you're developing. You can really tell which part of the video is scripted, scripted and which one isn't, right? <laughs>